All right, welcome back. It's Peter Cole, and this is part three of my intro to orchestral sample libraries. In this video, we're going to be talking about string articulations. This was something that really confused me when I first started learning how to program with orchestral string libraries. And because these videos are for beginners, not for advanced people, for beginners, I think it might be a, um, something that's helpful to you when you're first starting out. Certainly would have helped me if I had someone kind of explaining what all these terms meant. So real quick, the way I would describe an articulation before we dive in is literally how the string player plays their instrument. So if you imagine a, a violin player holding their violin, an articulation is what they're doing when they're moving their bow back and forth. So there might be an articulation where they're playing it in a long sustained note, and we'll talk about that. So you'll hear the, the note ring out for a long period of time. Or they could be taking their bow and they could be literally slapping it against the strings, believe it or not. That's an articulation as well. Totally different sounds, totally different purposes. So again, in this intro video, if you're new to orchestral concepts in general this will be helpful and certainly if you're going to be using orchestral string libraries like i do to create orchestral based music it's really important to know what all the articulations mean the other thing i'll say is i'm not going to go into tremendous uh, detail um, and cover every single possible articulation there's actually a lot um, and also even in the video here i'm going to keep it pretty high level i will have a blog post, which I'll link to in the description of this video, which you can go to and read and get a lot more information and detail about each articulation. So right now I've got um, inside my DAW, inside of Logic, I've opened up Cinematic Studio Strings, um, but you could of course use any sample library and part of the point of this video is to get you to understand maybe the differences between what one sample library will offer in terms of articulations because some offer a smaller amount than others so i wanted to start with a sample library that i thought was a good base that covered most of the common ones you'll see and it also lays it out in a way that's really easy to understand okay so before we start talking about the articulations let's try to imagine a couple different categories that articulations can fit in. I like to think of them in two to three different categories. The two main ones being a long articulation, which is when the string player holds the note for a long time, right? That's a very common sustaining articulation. Complete opposite would be a short articulation. So there's a lot of articulations that fall into this category of short, and that's literally just a short like stab or, or even sometimes a percussive sounding um, way of playing the instrument. So those are short articulations. The third category gets a, gets a little bit blurry and it's more my way of looking at it. And the third category could be more decorative and more effects type of category. And they could be long actually, or they could be short or maybe even a combo. So I like to think of them a little more decorative. When we go through the articulations here in this example though, for the most part, things are falling into that long verse short category. So let's listen to some examples. Once again, I got cinematic studio strings loaded up. I love this library and I love it also for demonstrating this concept because it lays out the articulations in a very clear way. And it even kind of explains that concept of, of categorizing things in, in long versus short. And I'll show you why in a second. So the first one we're going to look at is sustain. Give me a second to adjust this. The first one we're going to look at is the sustain, quite possibly the most common and easiest to understand articulation. And that is because it is literally just a long sustained note. When you think about strings and you think about sample libraries, that's probably the most obvious and easiest to understand. Here's where it gets more interesting though. Within the sustained category, there's a concept uh, or there's an articulation called legato. And you can see, this is why I like cinematic studio strings. You can very easily turn on the legato articulation. And the main difference between a sustain articulation and a legato, note that it still falls under that long sustain category. So it's a long note. But the way legatos are created and the concept behind a legato is 
is it's actually capturing the transition between two sustained notes. So if you can imagine a string player as they're playing their violin or their cello or whatever, when they're shifting from one note to the other, there's actually a transition between the two notes going from do, do. The transition between those two notes is what's captured in legato. Okay, so let's hear an example of a legato articulation. So first we're gonna do a transition from one note, A, to a second note, C, and we're gonna use a regular sustain articulation. I'm doing this so you can really hear what's going on with legato. So once again, this is just a regular sustain. I'm going from A to C. Let's hear how that sounds. So hopefully what you can hear there are the two notes, A and C, playing together. I'm trying to transition from one to the other. I want to go from A to C, but I'm doing an overlap so you can really hear how the two notes play on top of each other. Really big difference when I switch to a legato articulation. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to play an A to a C and I will keep the overlap so they're both actually, the notes are actually playing together, but let's hear how this sounds. So hopefully what you're hearing there is you're hearing not the two notes playing on top of each other, you're actually hearing a transition from A to C. Let's hear that again. We're, we start with A. Keeping the notes overlapped so that they're actually being played at the same time, but what a legato articulation does is it is actually performing the transition from A to C, not just two notes playing at the same time. So that's the big difference between a regular sustain. Let's hear that again. And the legato, which is more about the transition between the two. So this was a concept that when I was first starting out was a little bit difficult for me to wrap my head around. So hopefully this helps explain it a little better. So also within the long sustained category of articulation is something called consordino. I hope I'm saying that right. And uh, this is a, a pretty simple one to understand. When you flip on consordino, it becomes what's called a muted uh, articulation. And that's uh, essentially uh, just a softer, uh, more darker sound. So listen to this now. Consordino off. Without consordino, it's it's much more bold and kind of in your face. Consordino is a, a bit more milder. Turned off. Consordino. So hopefully you can hear that. Overall, consordino means muted, so it's a little softer, a little more darker. It's tremolo is the next one I'm gonna go over. And a tremolo is when you're kind of going back and forth really quick um, and creating kind of a vibrating tremble sound. Uh, and I think that's where they got the name, perhaps. It's like a trembling sound, listen to this. So instead of the sustained and smooth note, tremolo is, is moving the bow back and forth very quickly to get that sort of uneasy trembling sound. <laughs> uh, it's great for suspense. It's great for you know, even horror movies, uh, soundtracks and stuff. You've heard it all over the place. It's a great way of creating tension. And by the way, you've noticed if you were looking at the screen uh, here, I had tremolo, which is a long articulation with legato turned on, so it's recording the transitions between notes, and I happen to have consordino turned on as well. So now it's a muted legato tremolo. You catch that? So it's muted. It's got the transition.
transition between notes, and it's also tremolo, which gives you that tense, trembling sound. I'll turn the this. I'll turn concertino off just briefly so you can hear. So hopefully you can hear that the sound of the the player going back and forth really rapidly with their bow. I wish I could play tremolo uh, on a violin and, and show you, but I can't. So that those are some of the common long ones. Another one that is not quite so common um, is the harmonic, and it's usually in, in long format as well. What I love about har harmonic, it's also what I consider a little bit more of an effect, but it's a long, it's still long, just to sustain. But listen to that. Totally different sound. And what it's, what it's capturing is the, and, and I gotta be honest, I don't play violin, I don't know how they do this. Maybe a violin player can tell us how they do this in, in the comments, but it's just capturing the overtone of the note. So if you listen to, to a regular sustain, and I hit the C note, and that's the fundamental, the C, and there's, on top of that, there's a bunch of overtones creating those higher notes, those higher frequencies. You, you, but you're hearing the, kind of the bass note, the fundamental there. When you turn on harmonic, you're not hearing the fundamental. You're not hearing the, 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 the lower frequency note in there. You're hearing the higher version of it. It's like octaves above, right? So this is creates a very, you know, almost ghostly, very high, higher pitched light sound and it's used obviously for effect. There's also cool ways of doing it with layering, which we're going to talk about in a different video where you layer a harmonic sound on top of a, a normal sustained sound and it makes a very rich and lush sounding tone overall. So it's kind of like adding to the to the regular sound that you get from a normal sustain. So harmonic is is um, I see that in, in quite a few libraries. So it's not it's not a rare articulation, but it's it's definitely not, I would say, in every common uh, string library out there. So so keep a lookout for it if that's something you're interested in. There's a there's another one um, that is not I don't believe uh, offered with cinematic studio strings called flutando um, and that's a similar sound so you might see those two you might see flutando you might see harmonic they're, they're a similar concept now let's go on to the shorts shorts are actually my favorite I do a lot of more faster action type music and that's where shorts come in you can imagine if you're writing an action scene and uh, like a chase scene or something you're not necessarily going to have these long beautiful sounding strings all necessarily you're going to have very fast moving da -da 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 -da, you know sounds that's what you get with the short articulations because it's just the string player playing very rapid kind of i i like to think of them as, as stabbing uh types of sounds right because it's very quick so let's look at the interface here in cinematic studio strings again i think they do a great job of of illustrating the concepts here you can see it so clearly staccato is kind of the base most most common one um that you see they're all very similar so when i'm playing these you're probably uh, gonna wonder what i'm talking about because it's it's kind of hard to hear the difference but staccato is is the sh notice that Kind of the, the default jabbing sound. However, if you listen very carefully, it's short, but there's still a little bit of extra um, kind of noise ringing out at the end. It's not super short, <laughs> I guess you could say. So within the short category, there's different types. So there's staccato, which, which we just listened to. There's also statissimo, which is essentially even shorter than staccato. So listen to that. See how it, it ends even quicker? It's even shorter. So let's go back to staccato. See, there's a little bit of rain. It's short. This is like kind of the entry point of short. <laughs> and then you go to statissimo. And it's just that much kind of quicker and more of a stab. Then, if that wasn't enough for you, you can go to spiccato, 
So there's spiccato. So spiccato is even shorter. And what, what's happening, as I understand with spiccato, is the bow of the, that the string player is using is actually bouncing off the string. So it creates an even uh, tighter and more percussive sound. Uh, so this is the one I use the most. I'll, uh, just so you know, spiccato is what I use the most because I want the really fast, super quick, tight sound. I don't want a lot of overtones and, and stuff like uh, ringing out afterwards. I want it super tight. So let's just look really quickly at the difference. The most noticeable to me is staccato, which doesn't quite seem sharp enough for what I like most of the time, not all the time. So staccato versus spiccato. Wow. So a lot to keep track of. I'm not going to go into this now, but you'll notice you can also, uh, at least within Cinematic Studio strings, you can make each of those co concertino. So you could take a spiccato and mute it. Uh, same with staccato. staccato. So you can take staccato and with consordino, it's muting it. So uh, like I said at the beginning, a lot of these articulations get confusing because they overlap. You can have a short articulation that's muted, consordino. You can have a long articulation that's muted, consordino. So that's why we kind of have to keep studying this stuff so we remember what they all all the terms mean because they they overlap and and they apply to both long and short and some kind of give off an effect sound which doesn't even necessarily fit in either category it kind of fits in both sometimes uh, the next short that's that's common is marcato this is a this is an, another great uh, one used for action and 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 faster pace <laughs> And it has less of a jabbing sound. Actually, let me turn off Consordino there. I'm also going to turn off. And, and see, they give you so many options in cinematic studio things. They actually apparently give you a spiccato overlay to make it even sharper. So I'll turn that off just so we can hear fundamentally what a, a marcato sounds like. So you see it's short and... But it's got, it's more about the accent that it's giving you at the beginning of the note. It still rings out longer. So it could be considered a long or a short, right? But it's mostly used, I find, in a short context. It's great, though, because you can imagine if you're writing a piece of music and you have a, uh, a more faster piece phrase and you want the tight short sound but you still want the notes to ring out and, and create a little sustain that's what marcato is great for so you get that accent and then it kind of drops down so marcato has a lot of good uses the last one i'm going to i'm going to talk about one of the most recognizable i think the uh, especially if you listen to a lot of music that you hear in TV commercials, is the piccat pizzicato. Uh, I always have trouble saying that. Pizzicato um, is the plucking of the string. So that's literally the what it sounds like, too. I don't even think I needed to tell you that. You probably could have figured it out, right? It sounds like a pluck. So it's very percussive. It's short. But it always, at least to me, has a, a more subdued and it's actually kind of a playful sound, right? It's not the sharp attack of a st staccato or spiccato. It's more of a, of a light, bouncy, rhythmic. Uh, there's a style of music called dramedy. It's the types of shows you see on TV where it's, a, it's both a drama and comedy. So they call it dramedy. And a lot of that music and a lot of reality TV music uses that pizzicato sound. And again, you hear it a lot in commercials. It's a very light, bouncy. It doesn't really get in the way. And, and you can create rhythms in addition to melodies with it, right? Because it's a... 
It's got the rhythmic thing and the, the melodic thing going on. All right, so what I covered today was what I would consider the most common articulations that you'll see in most string libraries out there. Everyone's gonna have a long, everyone's gonna have a short. Within those two categories, there might be slight variations. Some might offer a little bit more, some might offer a little bit less. Most of the base ones we went over here are common. They're in most every library. From there, if you wanna really get more advanced, you could look into libraries like Spitfire Chamber Strings as an example, where they offer like tons of articulations. It's almost overwhelming how much they offer. Uh, they will offer different types of shorts that are more percussive, for example. So the ones here, I just wanted to keep to the bare essentials, the foundation of what you'll see out there, and we'll get you started with sample libraries. So hopefully this video was super helpful. Please, please uh, like and subscribe. Hit the, what is it? Hit, no, smash the like button. I'm learning my YouTube terminology still. Smash the, the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next time.